Dr. Matt Rayner, Curator Land Vertebrates, Auckland Museum. Matt. Well, good morning, everybody, and um, I'd like to start by uh, thanking you for the uh, invitation to speak here today. It's an incredible honour. Uh, well, I was born on the banks of the Tamaki River, and I, I love Tamaki Makaurau, and I'll be the first to sort of put my hand up and say I'm, I'm one of the people, like most of you in this room, who are, who are deeply concerned with what's going on with uh, New Zealand biodiversity. Uh, but today I'm going to talk uh, about my, my area of study, which is, which is seabirds, and with the 10 minutes uh, I'm going to use four very quick points. We're going to have a, a um, seabird speed dating system here. I want to talk to you about New Zealand being a global centre of seabird diversity. I want to tell you how our populations are relict and how we're missing ecosystem services as a result. We're going to look at some threats degrading seabird populations and finally I want to tell you how our monitoring of seabird populations is inadequate. So if we take a drone and drive it up 120 kilometres in the air up here you're going to see a large land mass isolated in one of the la largest oceans on the planet. It's got a diverse range of terrestrial habitats. It's surrounded by rich, productive waters. And it was uh, you know, mammal-free for, or um, continental mammal-free for uh, about 80 million years. So as a result, there's, there's no surprise that New Zealand finds itself as a, as a global uh, seabird diversity hotspot. There's about 350 seabird species in the world. Uh, in New Zealand, we have about 84 of those species. And critically, 36 of those species breed nowhere else in the world. So 10% of the world's seabirds are only found in this country. Second place is Mexico, and that's got about seven times less than, than we do. Unfortunately, if we compare seabirds and landbirds, I hate to do this to our next speaker, but we actually have more, um, more seabirds than landbirds in this country. Uh, we've got about yeah, 84, 85 species of seabird and in the mid-70s of landbirds. And if we just look at some of the diversity features um, of these seabirds, they're made up of 12 families. There's three key families, though, that um, are incredibly significant in terms of biodiversity. And the first of these is uh, the penguins, uh, the sphenisciforms, such as this eastern, these eastern rockhopper penguins here. Um, uh, a colleague of mine, Cole Morrison, has just done his PhD study on these birds down at Campbell Island and provides these fantastic photos. Um, we have seven spe uh, six species of penguins um, out of 17 total in the world. And these eastern rockhoppers, they're in a nat nationally critical state. They've undergone a decline of about 94% between the mid-1900s and the, and the late 1900s. We still don't know why. Second biodiversity group of real importance of seabirds is our shags or cormorants. Uh, we have 12 species of, of shags <coughs> out of the 30, 39 total in the globe, such as these spotted shags here around Nelson. Uh, these guys have also undergone a real range contraction, particularly up around the Auckland area with populations declining uh, in, the, in the last 50 to 100 years. Uh, a lot of our biodiversity in shags also comes from small populations in South Antarctic islands where each island group will have its own endemic species. And of course, uh, true to my heart is the petrels, and by the petrels I'm talking about four families, um, the albatrosses, the storm petrels, the diving petrels, uh, and also the shearwaters and other petrel species. And these guys really are um, a flagship for New Zealand seabird diversity. We've got 48 species of 118 species in the world. And for example, albatrosses, about 23 species in the world, half of the world's albatrosses breed only in New Zealand, such as this grey-headed albatross here um, on Campbell Island. So incredible diversity in these tube-nosed tube seabirds. OK, second point. Our seabird populations are relict. What do I mean about that? I mean if you came back to New Zealand 1,500 years ago, New, Zealand's, New Zealand seabirds was possibly the great biodiversity mass uh, in the, in, on the land mass. Um, if you're lucky enough to take a, a night vision camera like I did to the top of uh, Tihoturu Otoi or Little Barrier Island at night, uh, you'll, you'll see something like this. And this is hundreds of thousands of Cook's petrels flying around this island coming into land. This scene was commonplace on New Zealand before we turned up here. 
Now, in terms of the ecosystem services that have been lost from mainland New Zealand, um, this is a, a huge impact. Uh, seabirds provide marine, marine derived nutrient back to land from the sea. Um, so we're only just really starting to understand what we've actually lost from these systems. Third point, threats are still degrading seabird populations and seabirds are really good models for what's happening for threats on land but also threats in the marine environment because they inhabit both. There's a range of threats that impact seabirds, um, the, classic, the classic one, invasive species, uh, but also interaction with fisheries, trawl fisheries, long lines, and also recreational fishes. Also human disturbance of seabird colonies is a real, a, a real major problem. And climate change, um, that sort of Democles hanging over all our, all our heads. I'm just going to use now um, a series of examples with some known population data to talk about some of these issues. The first is invasive, spe invasive species, um, and this is, the, this is the right forum um, for us to, to understand the effect of these animals on, on our wild things in New Zealand. Um, a good example of the, the effects of native species on seabed populations comes from Little Barrier Island and the story of uh, the eradication of introduced pests and its subsequent effects on Cook's petrel. So Cook's petrel um, were being hammered by feral oh, were being hammered by feral cats and the Pacific rat, Kiori. Um, and in 1980, feral cats were eradicated from Little Barrier. This resulted in a decline in Cook's petrel breeding success as a result of an ecological release of the rats. Then uh, in the early 2000s, there was a, a, a heated debate as, well, it wasn't really a debate, it went to the Environment Court, a fight about whether rats should be removed from Little Barrier Island. It was very contentious. Of course, when the rats were eventually removed, um, there was a rather small, well not so small, increase in breeding success of Cook's petrel. The, se the second major factor that's impacting seabirds is fisheries impacts, and the perfect um, species representative for this is the black petrel. It's a species most threatened by um, fisheries bycatch in this country. The recent expansion um, by the Ministry of Primary Industries of a marine observer program has revealed that these birds are unsustainably being killed by inshore um, and offshore um, uh, long line and bottom fishing um, practices. And these data match with what are being seen at the colony, um, annual declines of the birds of around 2% towards extinction. And this is a real, this is a real problem for the species with a world total population of about seven, um, 11,000 individuals. Disturbance is another key issue for seabirds and um, we, we've heard a little bit about fairy tern already, but this is one species that really suffers from disturbance. It chooses to nest in a place where we love to go, and that's the coast. It's on beaches. And so w w what you can see with the fairy, fairy tern population data here is that the fairy tern population has been, been hanging on at around 10 to 11 breeding pairs for the last, for the last decade. While its population numbers, thanks to active management, have been, have been clim climbing, but there's a limitation on available breeding habitat for this species because of human impacts um, on the coastal areas around um, north of Auckland. Finally, ecosystem change. Um, that, that, that sort of big, big chestnut hanging over us all. Um, Bill made the point that seabirds can move far in the ocean, but uh, a lot of my research is around how what happens to seabirds out at sea impacts their populations on land. Um, and a perfect example of this is uh, the Antipodean wandering albatross. Um, these, these birds have been studied by Graham Elliott and Kath Walker on the Antipodes Islands for the last 20 years. And what's been seen is since 2004, a decline in the population of these birds. <coughs> at first it was thought this could have been um, related to an expansion of swordfish fisheries in, in the Southern Ocean. But unfortunately what the data are showing is that yes, breeding success of these birds is declining, but this is not because of loss of actual breeding adults. Adults are still returning to the colony. There's something going on in the marine environment that's affecting these birds. When you look at tracking data for these this, this species, and so what these are are called kernel density estimates, basically the black areas are where there's lots of concentrations of locations of tracking points from where the birds were. These are data for uh, the 1990s through to 2004. You see the birds are grouped around the Antipodes. And here's more recent data. 
something, something's happening in the marine environment that are forcing these animals to go further and further for food. Ecosystem change. The final point I make, um, unfortunately our monitoring of seabirds um, has been very inadequate um, and I could choose handfuls of species to make this point. Uh, we only, only have a small number of species that we have good data on. For example, red bull gull, the classic beast that you expect to see around your fish and chip wrapper at Mission Bay. Well, these guys, these guys are in real trouble, red bull gulls. Um, in the Hauraki Gulf, populations have declined on islands such as Burgess Island and the Mokohinos uh, from around 10,000 pairs in 1946 to just 100 or so pairs. The same thing's happening on, happen, happening on, on Kuvia Island. Uh, New Zealand storm petrel, well here's a, here's a species that are, is a real example of a, a lack of an understanding of seabirds. We didn't even know it existed prior to 2003. We thought it was a, extinct. <clears throat> so I'll just make the final point. Um, I recently I visited Indonesia on a holiday and we travelled six hours across the Sumatra Strait. Of course I had my binoculars out. And uh, I didn't see a single seabird. Subsequently, I went back and read in the literature that Indonesia has suffered a 96% decline in its seabird populations in the past 20 years. This photo was taken about 200 metres off uh, Takapuna Beach a couple of years ago. Yesterday, I went down and saw a southern right whale 10 metres off the, down, the water down at the, the, the Tamaki Drive. My point is that I think as New Zealanders, we really need to value these, uh, these species more, much more value to these species. Uh, and particularly, I see in the program uh, point uh, session 10 about engaging New Zealanders in, bi in biodiversity. I actually think that session should be number two after, after this session. I think that's most important. Thank you. Thank you.